Hi, I'm Jeremiah, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a bullet time freeze effect in After Effects using just two-dimensional elements in uh, After Effects 3D space. Um, I'm going to be using Action Essentials 2, the 2K versions. Uh, you can get a smaller or lower resolution version. I think it's uh, 720p or 1080p. I don't remember which one, but I have the 2K version. In this case, we're scaling elements down, so you can use the smaller ones, or just you know get an image of a muzzle flare, or you know there, I know there are other muzzle flare packages out there. <clears throat> you don't have to use the one that Video Copilot has, or Andrew Kramer has. Um, the effect I'm going to be doing is uh, it looks like this right here, or it's supposed to look like this. It's not playing. Hold on a second here. Okay, there you go. Um, the uh, yeah, I mean that's that's it basically. Uh, I uh, I filmed this footage, the uh, background plate on a, a Sony EX1. Let me just go ahead and load this in. Um, I filmed it at 60 frames a second, so it's in slow motion. You don't have to record it in slow motion. You don't have to use a Sony EX1. You can use whatever you have. Um, it just so happened that slow motion made it smoother and made it a little easier for me because I did not have a uh, stabilizer. I do, however, have uh, some rolling shutter in this footage, but it's not noticeable with the effect applied. No one's, no one's mentioned it yet. I did stabilize the footage in Virtual Dub using the DeShaker plugin. It's a, a very powerful plugin. I ha I highly recommend it. Uh, it's completely free, DeShaker and uh, Virtual Dub. Um, you can, uh, oops, you can get a uh, Virtual Dub. Just Google. And uh, just Google Virtual Dub, and it's uh, virtualdub.org. And then there's uh, DeShaker, which is the plugin, and that's free right there. And then DeShaker Guide, and that will get you a wonderful guide on how to use DeShaker. It's, um, oops, that's the wrong one, I think. Okay, oh, yeah, I think that's the right one. Yeah, I think it's, is that right? No, that's not it. I think it's, yeah, there we go. First result. Um, that's, there's a guide. It's a great guide. I uh, highly recommend it. Now, um, I also should have used a Steadicam, so uh, I, I didn't. I didn't happen. I didn't have a chance to build a, a Steadicam, but you know, just the fourteen dollars camera stabilizer that would have worked great, or a heavy tripod, um, something like that. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and jump right into this. I have already brought in my footage uh, into the composition. Um, I'm gonna go in and track it. I'm going to uh, track motion. I'm going to take my track point here. I'm going to position the small tracking point around the muzzle hole. Uh, just encompass it right there. And the large box around the muzzle. And I'm just going to hit track here in just a second here. Or just hit uh, analyze forward. Okay, that looks great. Uh, the only uh, problem with this track, which is understandable, is that the uh, tracking point wanders off a little bit but that's only because you go from one side to the other to one side to the other side so that's a major perspective change that's understandable this is a great track uh, aside from that fact I'm gonna create a, a null object here I'm gonna call this um, track <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna edit target make sure track is selected okay apply okay now that's applied um, I'm going to then Gonna bring in muzzle flash straight zero nine. I'm gonna bring that in. I'm going to scale it down. Excuse me. That looks good. And we're gonna get muzzle flash thirteen. Bring that in and uh, scale that down a little bit as well. We want the uh, we want the top and bottom to fit inside this white portion right here. So I think that will work. Oh, and then I need to uh, make make both of these 3D. I'm going to take the muzzle 13 layer. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the uh, Y rotation, or Y axis, Y Y Y rotation axis. Um, trying to figure out why it's. Okay, I think it's. Uh, Make sure it's. Let me go to. Uh, oh, I know. Sorry. Gotta go to top view and uh, let me go to uh, custom view one. 
just make sure that this is lined up with it right there. That looks good. A little more. Okay, go to active camera. I think that'll work. And you'll see where, where this comes in. Oops. Okay, let's go back. Uh, we're going to go to both of these. We're going to change the mode to add. And um, I'm going to select them both. And I'm going to go to layer, time, time, uh, freeze, freeze frame. And let's extend both of these out to the end. There we go. Let's uh, collapse that. And I'm going to create a new null object. I'm going to call this um, flare. And I'm going to position it. I'm going to hold on. Let me uh, let's see here. Let's solo that in the background layer or background plate. And I'm going to go right here when the camera's facing the muzzle directly, the muzzle of the barrel directly. I'm just going to position that flare. I'm going to make sure it's 3D. I'm going to position it right there. And I'm going to take the uh, pan behind tool. I'm going to move the um, I'm guessing that's, I, I don't know what the official name for this point is, but a point where usually these these objects orbit around or rotate around and move that right, right about there. Uh, I'm going to take the two mosel layers, I'm going to parent those to flare, I'm going to parent flare to track. Actually, wait, sorry. Okay, uh, let me unsolo these. I'm going to position, um, I'm going to position the front facing flare that's going to go right over here and then the uh, side facing flare okay so that that the front facing flare is going to be parented to flare and then the side facing flare is going to be parented to the front facing flare i'm going to move that over here just like that okay that's good and um, let's create um, trying to think here okay let's Let's uh, set the rotation of flare. We're going to set the Y rotation. We're going to create a point there. We're going to we're going to go to the very beginning, and what we want to do is we want to rotate this so that it looks like it's uh, well. Hold on, let me go to. Well, okay. So you see the camera's pointed. Excuse me, the gun's pointed in an angle. So we want to point the flare, so to speak, at an angle that looks about right. Eh. I think that's, oh, that looks good right there. And we're going to go to the very end, and we're going to rotate this back the other way. Is that positive, or, yeah, there we go. I'm going to rotate it the other way. So now, when the camera um, moves, or excuse me, yeah, when the camera moves, the flare moves as well, and it looks like it's actually rotating. Okay, now I think it might rotate a little too much here at the end. Yeah, that angle seems a little odd, so I'm going to rotate it a little less. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, should be about that, about that much. I will scale the. Uh, let's see which one is it. Okay, I'm going to scale the. Make sure. Okay, I'm going to scale that flare up a little bit and move it forward some more. Okay. Okay, that's better. So it, it sticks out a little bit more. And I'm gonna again. I'm also gonna change the rotation here at the beginning. That looks better. Okay, now um, that looks good. Uh, I'm going to next. Well, let's see here. Yeah, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Next, I'm going to. Let's collapse all this again. I'm going to turn off those two, uh, three, the flare, the flare null, and the two flare layers. I'm going to add uh, muzzle flash 10. I'm going to solo it. I'm going to go to frame 1. I'm going to go to layer, time, time, uh, freeze frame. Let's stretch that out at the end. Let's add a curve adjustment, or curves adjustment. It suggests the alpha. <coughs> Excuse me. Bring that up. It looks good. And we're going to add the uh, muzzle flash 10 again, or again. 
we're going to go to frame one, one, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, but frame six or seven, that will not that'll work, and yeah, let's solo, let's solo that, oops, yeah, woo, that was too much, okay, sorry, let's go to frame one, two, three, four, five, Six. Okay, frame six. Bring in the curves adjustment. Go to alpha. Bring that up. That looks good. Actually, let's go back. Let's, let's go to frame one, two. Let's go to frame th three or four instead. That's better. Let's go to uh, layer time. Freeze frame. Bring that to the end. Scale out of the timeline. Okay, so let's solo these two layers. We're going to rotate this one, so we don't we don't want it. To, uh, we don't want them pointing in. Well, let's see here. It's almost like a propeller shape, almost, or a uh, three angled, three a cornered shape. Let's cross these two right there, and uh, we're going to create. Let me see here. Let's move these in the f at the very top. We're going to create a new null. We're going to call this smoke. We're going to parent. Okay, we're going to parent the bottom flare, the top flare, and the top flare to the smoke null. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me undo that. Let me position the smoke null right in the center. And let's grab the pan behind tool and center that rotation point. Okay, so bottom muzzle flare, parent to the top muzzle flare, parent the top muzzle flare to the smoke null. And we're going to make all of these 3D layers. Uh, we're going to take the Y rotation of one of these smoke layers. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. We're going to take the Y rotation of the one that's not the parent. We're going to rotate that. Whoa, why is it rotating off kilter? Oh, great. That's because I rotated it in 2D view. Okay. That's going to cause some problems. Okay, I'm going to. Great. Okay. Let me, uh, Okay, I'm turning off the uh, 2D, and I'm going to reset it. I, I, okay, I brought it back to 2D. I'm resetting it. I'm making it 3D again. I'm going to bring it back over here. I'm going to rotate it this time along the Z-axis. The, the first time I rotated it, it was uh, in a 2D layer, so that messed it up when I converted it to 3D. Okay, so let's parent this back. Or excuse me. Oops, yeah. Okay, we're parenting, or we're, we're parenting, no. Yeah, we're going to pick whip this to the top layer. So that's that's all good now. And we're going to move the... Sorry. We're going to move the Y rotation of the bottom layer. Err, what is wrong? Okay. I'm very sorry that this is being messed up like this. Okay, okay. Let me uh, undo this again. Transform. Reset. Okay. Make it 2D. Oh, wait a second. That's messed up. Ugh. Great. Okay, that's what it is. Let's make it 2D. Let's go to rotation. Well, no, I guess that's right. Okay, I don't know why it's messing up like that then. I'm going to make it 3D again. This time I'm going to rotate it. That is very odd. Okay, I don't know. I'm just going to... I'm going to have to do some rotation adjustment here. So I'm adjusting it along the... all the axes here. You know what? I'm just going to delete this. Let's just duplicate muzzle flare tin. And call it that. And I'm going to... Let me, un, let me unparent these. I'm going to pick up the bottom one to the top one and the top one to smoke. Okay, there we go. That was easy. Okay, so let's rotate this. There we go, that's much better. Just, we're just uh, rotating it about 90 degrees. Yeah, let's just do 90 degrees. Um, we're going to then rotate... Sorry. Let's rotate the null. There we go. Okay, now what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to make it look like this is... This is a uh, three-dimensional smoke layer. So we're going to pick the point 
the furthest point we can rotate on either side. I'm going to parent it there. Excuse me. I'm going to create a. Uh, I'm going to create a uh, keyframe, and let me uh, unsolo these. Make sure I'm going to make sure smoke is parented to the track null. Okay. Let's go to the. Um, let's go to the very end. Whoops. Let's also make sure that it's right over the muzzle that muzzle flare right there. Oh, excuse me. The muzzle. I need to re-rotate that. There we go. Okay, so that looks good. Go here. And go to the very end. Let's rotate that as far as we can, which is about that far. So, we didn't achieve a huge amount of rotation. Um, but, hold on, let me just go to top. Oh, wait. What's wrong here? Oh, sorry. I gotta solo all these. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you'll see here how they're crossing right there, um, and that's just gonna per that's gonna be perceived as somewhat three dimensional when you play it back. Okay, that looks good, and um, you can see it being three dimensional as it goes through the shot. Now it is kind of obvious right here that these are just. You can see how it looks almost exactly the same on either side, but when once we add the muzzle flare, no one's going to notice that, so we'll be good. Okay, so we got that. Let's unsolo everything, collapse it all. Whoa. Okay, turn all these on, and let's analyze or ram preview. Okay, that looks pretty good. The only thing is that um, you you really can't tell here, but if you Look at the screen at an angle. You'll see that you can see these bands right here in the flare, and that's because these flares are intersecting. So, your um, oops, let me make sure that's orientated right. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see here. Let me. Where is front? Okay, there we go. Okay, so you there you go. You can kind of see right there how it's intersecting. So what we're gonna have to do is position these so that they're not intersecting. Haha, <laughs> duh. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can easily remedy this. Oops, no, don't want to do that. Let's grab the smoke null. I'm just going to try to grab the smoke null and move it right in front. Ah, uh, looks like we're having to intersect a lot. Let's see here. We don't. The thing is we don't want it moving too much in front because then it's gonna be like whoa that's not even it's like moving all over the place so let me see this here let's move it down I think that fixes it right there so yeah that looks good let me do just one more RAM preview get third quality okay yeah that looks really good um, we don't have the intersecting issues. I don't see any. I'm moving. I'm moving at the angle. I guess you could also adjust the contrast to see if you could spot those, but I can't see anything. Okay, so um, what are we gonna do now? Oh yes, now we need to create. Uh, we're gonna go here and create a solid. Let's make it comp size. Let's hope our. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're gonna go layer precompose. We're gonna call this heat wave. Uh, this is the heat wave we're making. <laughs> um, so precompose that. Go in here. Uh, add the. Um, what what are we adding? Oh, we're adding a fractal noise. Noise plugin. Fractal noise plugin. Um, set the contrast to two fifty. And we're gonna set the scale. So there, yeah. So set the scale to fifty. And oh, bring that, bring the quality back up to full. Uh, go ahead, grab, take the ellipse tool, ellipses or ellipsy. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. Um, it just create a circle-y shape. Uh, when I was younger, or I still do, I, I read a lot. But uh, when I was younger, uh, a lot of words I would come across I only saw in books, so I had no idea how to actually pronounce them. Like for example, um, you know, kernel or uh, foe. I would. I thought that was colonel, and I thought foe was fox, 
or Falx or some something like that. So, you know, words like that, I didn't exactly know how to pronounce because I never heard them actually said in real life. Um, and I, I've rarely heard this word used, so that's why well, I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying it right. But if I'm not, pardon me. Um, yeah, so anyway, just, uh, you know, however you want it to look, it's kind of hard to give you an exact measurement because it kind of depends a little bit on what you're going for and, you know, the exact parameters you set up. You're just going to fade, you know, uh, do some feathering and, you know, adjust the expansion to to whatever size you want for however big you want your, your uh, flare, or excuse me, your heat wave. And we're going to go back to the main composition. We're going to parent this to the track null. We're going to turn on this little uh, button right here. Uh, I guess collapse transformations is what it's called. Yeah, so turn that on. Um, I'm going to turn the layer off. I'm going to go to the background plate. I'm going to search for displacement map. Put that on. I'm going to set the displacement map layer to heat wave. And I'm going to turn quality up here. And you'll see if I turn this on and off, you'll see this displacement take place. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the horizontal and the vertical displacement to 11. And we go back in here. I'm going to bring that up. Expansion. Spending. Okay, bring it up some more. There we go. That's looking good. I want to make sure it's following along here. Yep, it is. That's great. Okay, um, you can see the cool displacement right there. And let's go to the center and make sure it's... Yeah, that looks good. Let me turn this on here to let's center that. There we go. Now, uh, you'll notice here... Well, let me go to the end, or the beginning. You'll see these little black areas right here where it's displacing it. And there's nothing behind there. Just duplicate the background plate and on the duplicate, turn that off or the, the very layer underneath that and you'll solve that problem. Okay, well, this is looking really awesome. Excuse me. I'm going to add an adjustment layer and uh, add that and I'm going to do some color grading. Um, I have uh, I have Red Giant Mojo, which is a plugin from Red Giant. It's a great program. It's only about $100. And you have these really awesome presets. They work really good with footage that's um, it's evenly lit. Mine's pretty good. I have some bright spots here on the knuckles and a little bit on the face, but overall it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good use of this plugin. Um, I'm gonna let's just try Optimus. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm just using the Optimus preset for those of you that have this. I'm gonna do some levels adjustment. You need to move it, move the levels adjustment under Mojo so you can adjust the raw footage itself, not the raw footage with the Mojo layer on it and uh, I actually don't know what I'm doing I'm just randomly sorry I was talking I wasn't paying attention to what I was uh, doing that bring that down okay and just you know um, I'm just adjusting it I'm not really I'm just kind of yeah anyway okay so uh, there we go <laughs> I guess um, so yeah, that's that's how it looks. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean that's we're we're basically done here. So you know, however however else you want to use this again, you know, effects like these, you know, please don't you know go oh I want to do the exact same thing. You know, integrate this into your own way. Use techniques from this such as the heat wave for other effects, or the you know the the way I I did the motion tracking with the sort of faux 3D effects. Um, you know, there's lots of different ideas in this effect that you can use for other things. It doesn't have to be the exact same kind of shot. You know, be creative. Um, you, know, you know, don't don't just use this for the don't don't use this exact effect look for this exact kind of effect. You know, again, lots of techniques in here that you can use for other kinds of things. Um, I hope that this uh, tutorial was helpful for you. Um, if you want to check out some of my own work, you can. Go to my website at www.jeremiahjw.com or twitter.com forward slash jeremiahjw or uh, youtube.com forward slash jeremiahjw. Uh, basically, any of the big sites with slash jeremiahjw are mine. I'm not on MySpace. That was someone else who got there before I did. 
But um, anyway, I hope you again. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please leave a comment on the you know tutorial. Tell me what you think. Any any tips you would have to make it better. Um, but uh, you know, I hope you uh, I hope you learn a lot, and I hope you come back. So until next time, I'm Jeremiah, and uh, have a great day.